Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, welcome back to Witch Linux. Today we have a special uh, distribution to look, at, look out. This is one of my favorites and this has been one of my daily drivers. Uh, so let's just get started with it. So Manjaro Linux, as most of you guys are familiar with, is one of the uh, most uh, usable Arch Linux, I would say. It, it's one of the mainstream uh, Linux distribution with support for Genome, support for KDE, support for XFC. So whatever your heart wishes, Manjaro has it for you. And uh, out of the box, Manjaro comes with a lot of tweaks and a lot of uh, add-ons, which would really help the persons who are in, uh, installing it on their machine. Like uh, if you want uh, the GPU drivers, Manjaro has them. If you want uh, a new kernel, Manjaro has it. It's just a few clicks away. So without any further ado, let's just get started. So this is a fresh install of uh, Manjaro on my uh, virtual box. So let's just see what they have uh, going on over here. Okay, uh, so they're saying, welcome to Manjaro. So this is the readme, forum, donation. Mm -hmm. Seems like they have a genome layout switcher. Right, right. But I'm not going to tamper with the settings right now. And I'm not, I don't want this to be launching on the start every time I boot up. It's okay uh, for the first time, but like every time it's annoying. Right, so let's just see what they have. Right out of the box, uh, I say uh, like Manjaro right now supports the finger gestures. So like just like on Mac OS or Windows, uh, three fingers to swipe left or right to change the desktop. And again, uh, down or uh, to come back to the home screen and up again, three fingers to go back to the desktop view. So this is pretty common. I mean, like the gestures are like way better than what Linux used to have. And uh, that's all thanks to Genome. So let's just see what all we have over here. Uh, Manjaro comes with G shell out of the box and the Z shell integration uh, they have done is really good. Okay. Uh, let's just say I'm typing something. Okay. So when I type Siri again, it just shows me the hinting as well. So generally in Z shell, it doesn't show you, but it would suggest you when you hit tab. But then uh, this also has the hinting. Uh, and one of the quick feature that I like about uh, this uh, is that uh, the Z shell uh, is customized out of the box by Manjaro team itself. So if you see oh my posh or uh, any other Z shell configuration out there, uh, that's completely different from what Manjaro has for you. So they're using power line. This is the Manjaro ZSH configuration. That's it. Uh, and also let's see the disk utilization. Right. Uh, it's on the heavier side, I would say, but like not that heavy also. So I have allocated 106 gigs to this and it just used 8.5 gigs out of that. It's pretty good, I would say. Uh, let's see what is our uh, memory consumption. I allocated like 5.6 gigs. But it's like sitting around chilling at 600 megabytes, 605 megabytes. That, that's really good uh, for a Linux distribution. And also uh, do note that this is a virtual machine. And uh, like with, with even like the four virtual cores have allocated to it, it's it's idling at like 0 0.7, 1%, 2%. So that's, that's really, really good. And since this is based on a very lightweight uh, Linux, that's Arch Linux, uh, it's it's very perform uh, performance oriented as well. Uh, and also, if we check out uh, the navigation, it's quite smooth, I would say. And if you search something, it shows up right on uh, right on top. And let's go to the settings, and let's see what all do we have here. Okay. Uh, firstly, about so it's device name, hardware model, OS name, windowing system, they are using X11 by out of the box. Uh, I've seen a lot of systems use Wayland as well. 
but like that just depends upon the installation settings that you choose and also date and time default applications uh displays right uh, and uh, i do need to mention one other thing uh, my laptop uh, aspect ratio is 16 is to 10 a lot of other linux distributions i've tried like say suppose zorin os or ubuntu or fedora right out of the box they couldn't adjust uh, or scale uh, exactly to the display i have so the resolution was never like 2240 by 1400 or even though if it was showing 20 to 40 by 1400 if i switch to that uh, the display would crash uh, it never really worked but like manjaro has both open source drivers and also proprietary drivers so i installed with open source drivers because of which it works like flawless out of the box and also manjaro has its own power management for uh, balanced battery and performance profiles so like right now, all I see is balanced and power saver because like I'm running it in a virtual machine. If I run it on a physical machine, then it would also show me uh, performance, balanced and power saver. All right, I want to show the battery percentage. Right, uh, It's just pretty much uh, normal genome stuff, if you would ask me. Uh, let's just quickly close this. Uh, and also let's, let's just uh, see the uname. Sorry. See, it's even asking me to correct the whatever the word I was trying to type. Say, if I did this, it's asking me, do you mean clear? It's really smart in a way, but it's also dumb sometimes. So there you go. Uh, so in the settings, if you type settings, you would also see something called as Manjaro settings. So if you go into that, uh, there are a bunch of options at hardware level, at kernel level, you could deal with. So one quick thing I would look at is the hardware configuration. Uh, double click on that. And it, you, uh, it would show you the display controllers. So what all drivers it has installed for you. So you could just right click and install and it would install for you. So say suppose you have an NVIDIA graphics card, then the NVIDIA graphics uh, driver would show up automatically here and all you have to do is right click install, that's it. So that, that's really cool for, uh, for an enthusiast like me. And uh, say suppose I just want to try a new feature in the very new kernel version. Uh, all I have to do is just double tap on the kernel. Uh, and then uh, currently uh, the running and installed version is Linux 5.15.76-1. But if I want to try Linux 6, all I could do is install and reboot my system. That's it. There you go. You are on the live kernel. Uh, that's really out there. Uh, it's uh, and also uh, you could see the badges that they show here real time real time uh, most of the times whatever they are showing over here are really stable you could really like use it as your daily driver but then like if you have stability issues or weird driver issues i would always recommend uh, you to stick with lds and recommender so that's cool uh, let's just close this and see what all manjaro has for you so if i click settings again i have Manj genome tweaks out of the box so I think uh, a lot of people uh, who use uh, Genome use tweaks uh, very extensively. So you could customize all your uh, appearance here, the fonts. Uh, so generally I increase the font size a little bit, like maybe 14. Uh, again, th this depends upon uh, your configuration. For my laptop's resolution, uh, this works well. So, yeah, uh, and also we could uh, set a scaling factor instead of you know manually changing all the font sizes, but uh, it weirdly doesn't work sometimes. So it just just increase the font sizes. That's the best uh, thing. And also, uh, most of the times, whenever you install third-party applications and uh, it go it starts up on the system boot. Uh, it's hard to find uh, such applications, especially on KDE. I don't know if I'm missing something, but like uh, I use Zero Linux with KDE uh, on regular basis, and I really have find it hard to you know uh, make uh, the Microsoft Teams not start on startup. Even though I remove it from the startup applications, it weirdly starts. I don't know where the option is buried inside KDE. But like if you're using uh, something like Genome, you have startup applications right in the 
genome tweaks and you could just remove it from here and it never really it's not going to work and then you're going to have the title bars windows pretty pretty uh, standard stuff i would say uh, and then you have uh, a firefox right out of the box uh, one quick uh, thing i want to mention regarding arch linux is uh, so if you go to a ur repository uh, basically like any package that you could think of is already ported or built for arch linux and this uh, unlike like say suppose snap or something like that which is universal aur is only limited to arch linux and it, it really works flawless i have no complaints uh, since i've been using like manjaro for like very long time one and a half year uh, till date and i've very recently switched to zero linux just because of the aesthetics part uh, but like i'm pretty sure uh, that i would go back to manjaro any day because the memory management in manjaro is also very good so one of the quick mentions i would wanted to do was aur and no matter what kind of arch linux distribution you are on there is a software called as add or remove software so this is a life saver say suppose you are a linux newbie and you just getting started i highly recommend to you to use this software instead of trying to install all the programs manually say suppose i want to install something that's there, not there on aur but it's available on snapd no uh, no need to worry you all you got to do is go to preferences put in your password and then uh, right over here advanced third party just click on enable aur support you the, the other crazy thing is you could even check for the updates and install the updates right inside this software and then enable flat pack flat pack is also one of the wonderful package managers i would say very right right check for updates and i could even enable snap I, i don't like snap so i'm not enabling it right now but if you are interested in snap you could just enable it and say suppose i want to install vs code maybe okay right uh first and foremost thing don't be afraid to see these many number of results uh actually uh, like one uh, weird thing with this is it doesn't really you know uh, sort the results based upon the name but it, it sorts re re really differently so this is code get this is the latest branch of the visual studio code from the microsoft itself and if you click on build it will build the binaries for your system it will fetch all the uh, dependencies that it needs to build and then bundle them and then build it and install it on your machine it's really cool and uh, all you have to do is few clicks uh, just like how you do it in windows or mac os it's that simple and also i would like to mention uh, the crazy package manager they have uh, they use pacman and they also have for mac so both of them so <clears throat> one or the other uh, i mean like uh, most of the times if you don't find a package with pacman you would find it usually with pamac so one second so say suppose i want to update upgrade and install all the packages at a time so all i would just do is sudo pacman hyphen s for install hyphen 5 y for yes to everything and have a new for update there you go uh, and also one other thing i've mentioned I, i forgot to mention is the wifi drivers are pretty awesome on manjaro uh, you might think like this guy is like boasting about manjaro like anything but but it's hard to go wrong with manjaro because like it's so polished and it has wide amount of support from the community uh, and from the creators so it's it's really a very good choice to get started with linux uh, like even with arch linux like i was i was using zorin before prior to arch linux journey and uh, switching to manjaro was like not that painful or not that hard because when i was back in zorin all i had was sudo apt apt so apt was like very good package manager i would find everything right out of the box but then when i shifted to arch linux when i had to build my own binaries when i have to find the git repositories and uh, cmake tools and install c libraries c++ libraries just to get the program starting 
I I think out of all the uh, all the other Arch Linux distributions, Manjaro is your safest bet, and also the performance on Manjaro is like flawless. Uh, what else? What what else do we have uh, in the show applications? Uh, we have G uh, Gthumb. This is Image Viewer. Layouts is what we saw. Videos, web apps, cheese is like like the camera application that you have, and the Office that comes uh, right out of the box is only Office. But you could, uh, in the installation menu, you could choose or opt for LibreOffice as well. And in the uh, and in the access, these are like pretty common things. Like I'm not going to do, go deep into this. Uh, but like there is one other feature where uh, backups, right? So say suppose you want to take the backup of your entire system. So you could do that by clicking on create your first backup. So once you create a backup, just upload it to your Google uh, Drive or something like that. And say, suppose uh, because of some reason, uh, something has happened. Uh, sorry, because of some reason, something has happened and like you lost a particular file or something like that. So in the cloud world, we have snapshots and regular backups and images to build uh, uh, out from. So in a similar way, backups work so this backup uh, creates a bunch of tarball files and if you're restoring from them it will reset the system to that particular point it's, it's like git checkout to a commit hash so it's as simple as that this is also one of the crazy tools that comes out of the box with it and i really appreciate it uh, as you can see like there are a lot of updates and uh, i don't want to install them right now this is just a test machine and uh, if you noticed, like there was a timer uh, that was showing how much time it uh, took uh, to execute that. Uh, let's just say, so I'm recursively traversing through the root directory. If I suspend this, it will stay six seconds it took. So if say suppose I'm running a build or something like that, uh, the C shell integration would automatically calculate that and display it over here instead of you doing time space command. So it's just a clean thing. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much it for this Manjaro guide. Uh, this Manjaro first impression slash review. If you guys want to, you know, have a deep dive with Manjaro and uh, daily drive it for like 30 days, 40 days again, and then come back with a review. I'm open for it. Just let me know in the comments. So what did you think about uh, this video guys? Uh, let me know in the comments. Like uh, if you like this video or dislike if you don't like. That's it for today. See you then. Bye.